Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting discovery in regards to the history of our own planet. The discovery that suggests that conditions on early Earth were exceptionally similar to current conditions on Venus, while at the same time discovering a few more things that actually kind of surprised the scientists. So let's talk a little bit more about this and what all of this means and Let's start with a brief reminder that our planet Earth changed throughout its history quite dramatically. The beautiful blue planet that we know today is just one of many stages our planet has gone through. Like for example, as this image from Australian National University shows, there was a very long period of many hundreds of millions of years when our planet was undergoing a lot of different collisions, the period we often refer to as late heavy bombardment. During this period, the planet was very likely extremely different from how it is today. It may have resembled something close to what you see right here. Basically, a very large, very dangerous desert world. With the moon itself also being extremely close in comparison. Then, when the life appeared on the planet, we believe that the color of the planet changed to purple. Mostly because some of the early life that we actually also discovered still present on the planet in certain conditions was producing a lot of purple elements, elements that acted very similar to the green chloroform that plants use today. And so a lot of these organisms that lived on the planet, especially in the water, may have actually transformed our planet, turning it a completely different color from what it is today. And this is referred to as the purple earth hypothesis. There were also several periods when the planet was most likely something like this. This is known as the snowball hypothesis and we believe this happened at least three times but probably even more than that. The first such occurrence was probably because of the so-called oxygenation event that released a large amount of oxygen into the atmosphere, most likely also killing all of the organisms that used to make the planet purple. And because of the sudden increase in oxygen and most likely the lack of other gases, specifically greenhouse gases, the planet became extremely cold and turned into a snowball. Although for now that's just one of the many many explanations we have about what may have happened. But before all of these events, before the bombardment, before the purple planet, and slightly after the creation of the planet from the protoplanetary disk, the Earth was in a period known as the Hydean period when the planet was essentially a lava world. It was extremely hot, it had very very large lava oceans formed on the surface, and overall it probably wasn't a place you would want to live on. And although we're pretty sure that our planet had this stage, we're not entirely certain what other conditions the planet had on the surface, specifically in regards to the atmosphere. So even though, for example, we're pretty sure the planet was really hot on the surface, we don't really know if the atmosphere was thick, if there was any atmosphere, and uh, what sort of interaction there was between the planet and the atmosphere itself. At least, we didn't know, until the recent paper that was able to analyze all of this using a very ingenious technique and also several samples of different ancient rocks that we have from this period. For example, we know that when magma comes out and becomes lava and when it starts to solidify, because of the gases in the atmosphere and because of the interaction with these gases, it actually transforms quite dramatically and undergoes a lot of different chemical changes based on the gases present in the atmosphere. And because of this, by using certain rocks, such as for example peridotites, we can normally establish what sort of conditions they were formed in and also find out the, for example, amount of oxygen or carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere. But to make this more scientific, the scientists actually decided to recreate some of these conditions using very powerful lasers and magma or lava in this case, reproduced in the lab conditions. In other words, by using the lasers and by heating up certain components to extremely hot temperatures, the scientists were able to create lava-like conditions and then study the effects of various types of atmospheres on this lava. And this image right here summarizes their experiment perfectly. Basically, they created a miniature Earth that was roughly around 2000 degrees Celsius in temperature, and they then changed the gas conditions inside of this miniature Earth to see what sort of rock it would create. And based on their observations, they would then try to estimate what sort of an atmosphere the ancient Hadean Earth used to have. By the way, just to give you a rough idea, the Hadean period, which is right here, lasted for quite some time, just over 500 million years. And so this was a pretty long period 
Which means that our planet may have actually had these conditions for an extremely long time, although this is not something we can establish right now. But anyway, back to the study. So they took different samples of different gases, and naturally it created different types of rocks at the end. And specifically here they were looking at how oxidized the iron content was inside of these rocks. In other words, they were looking for the presence of rust. And they then compared this to the peridotites that already had the iron content and their age measured previously in order to establish which of their samples matched these ancient rocks. And it seems that as soon as the earth started to cool down and as soon as the magma here started to solidify, the atmospheric conditions were forming something that had relatively high contents of carbon dioxide, a little bit of oxygen, so the oxidation was actually pretty low, but also presence of nitrogen and also water. But what's really unusual here is that the pressures that were required to form these rocks were most likely about 100 times higher than they are today. In other words, the atmospheric pressure on early Earth and also the carbon content on early Earth surprisingly resembled the current atmospheric conditions on Venus. The current Venusian conditions are around 93 atmospheres of pressure and also extremely high presence of carbon dioxide, which was, interestingly, exactly what early Earth was like as well. And because of this discovery, it's somewhat easy to come to the wrong conclusion here. I guess one way of looking at this is that maybe one day Venus will transform and turn into something similar to planet Earth. But it's unlikely that this is what's happening here. As a matter of fact, what the scientists suggest here is that instead it's quite possible that both Earth and Venus started with extremely similar conditions on the surface. But unlike Earth, Venus, being closer to the Sun, eventually lost all of its water and the conditions here either remain the same or may have actually become even worse over time. But what happened to planet Earth was essentially the result of water still being on the surface. Because as the temperatures here cooled down and as the water became oceans, these oceans started to absorb some of this extra carbon dioxide and eventually deposited a lot of it deep into the Earth's crust, where it still is today as well. So a lot of the CO2 eventually essentially got converted into different types of rocks and through different interactions with water and other chemical reactions, basically became different types of rock deposits that eventually made it deeper and deeper into the planet. Then, even more CO2 started to be captured by various types of organisms, first by purple bacteria, then by green algae, which overall reduced the CO2 levels even more, thus reducing the pressure on the planet and, most likely, creating the atmospheric conditions we currently have on the planet. But because of this discovery, it also kind of creates a bit of a problem for the origin of life, or at least our understanding of the origin of life on the planet. Because the so-called Miller-Urey experiment that essentially explains how some of these organic compounds may have been formed on early planet Earth and eventually led to the evolution of life itself would not be possible in these conditions, simply because the gases were very different from what the experiment showed. In other words, the conditions necessary for the chemical reactions to start the formation of DNA, for example, were just very different from what we originally thought. The gases necessary for this chemical reaction to start were most likely absent, at least according to this experiment and the data from this experiment. But in order to see what exactly happened on early Earth and how the life was actually formed, we now have to study rocks from other periods and to try to use a very similar analysis to establish what atmospheric conditions were present on the planet in other periods as well. In other words, we would now have to try to figure out how the atmosphere of the planet evolved over time and how it changed from being extremely thick and very hot, similar to Venus, to becoming what it is today. But although the findings here do create a problem for the origin of life on the planet, they also at the same time easily explain how the planet was able to maintain relatively warm conditions for such a long period of time. Since back then the sun didn't really produce as much heat, the planet itself required a lot more pressure to maintain the liquid water on the surface. And this is exactly what probably happened. The conditions on Earth were very likely different in terms of the atmospheric pressure compared to what we have today. And that's actually a pretty interesting discovery, but it still doesn't answer everything. And I'm sure some of the future studies that most likely use similar techniques will help us pinpoint the exact evolution of the atmosphere on planet Earth 
and most importantly, explain what exactly happened to the formation of early life. For now though, it does seem to be a bit of a mystery. Anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.